Hi friends, my name is Emily and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you books that I would love to get to before the end of the year. So some of these things are new buys and I would like to get to them because there's still that excitement to them. Others are things that I am halfway through and I would like to decide before the end of the year whether I am going to finish it and review it on this channel or DNF and unhaul it. Let's start with the things that I have already started because these have potential to definitely be finished before the year is over. The first one and the oldest one is Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. So this is a pandemic book in which we get scenes of a flu, like a really contagious high mortality rate flu is spreading, and then we also see the aftermath with a troupe of people performing Shakespeare plays. And I really like the concept. I think I put it down because it was just too much. Like, part of me wanted to be on trend with everybody reading this pandemic book during a pandemic. I'm 80 pages into this book. I think I would like to revisit it and decide if I take it off my currently reading and reshelve it as to read for when times are a little bit more normal, or if I want to finish it while pandemic is still sort of a reality for us right now. The next book I'm reading I have misplaced the dust jacket for, and that is The Last Graduate by Naomi Novik. So the first book in this series had a lot of controversy. People didn't like that it was basically a bunch of info dumping about the world, and also there was the racist locks, and it's been taken out of following printings of the book. I picked this up because I did really like the first book, like I thought the world building was fascinating, and while I heard that it was very info dumpy, I was excited to see what Novik would do now that she had sort of established this magical school, the the mouths coming to eat young magicians. I am 210 pages into its sequel and I can't unsee the critiques. Uh, they're all still here. Very little is happening plot-wise and it is all still info dumping and it's just too much. Like every page you turn there's just like more info dumping. Now the thing is I'm already halfway into it I want to finish it for the sake of seeing if there is any shred of plot that starts to happen because I find this magical school and like the system that she set up interesting. Like I want her to actually do something with all of the shit that she's given us. I'm still partially holding out hope for that. I think this is the book that got me stuck this November. I have read one book this November and half of The Last Graduate and like nothing else. <laughs> I just keep picking things up and putting things down. Speaking of things that I've picked up and put down, I have A Ghost in the Throat by... I'm gonna butcher this. My name is Darren Negrefa. This is good, but it's slow and I don't have the mental energy for it right now. Like, at this moment in November, this week, this weekend even, I don't have the mental energy for it but I could see this being absolutely fascinating. The blurb is a little bit of... I want to say a lie. I'm going to say a lie. The blurb makes this book sound cooler than it is. So it says, On discovering her murdered husband's body, an 18th century Irish noblewoman drinks handfuls of his blood and composes an extraordinary lament. So that is like a folklore that the actual main character of this book uh, a stay-at-home mother who has like way too many babies and is like just expelling fluids, milk and blood and all that jazz. She has this poem like stuck in her head and even though she's not an academic she starts researching it the way you would if you were doing archival research to try and find out more about this woman and the person who wrote the poem. If you are not going by the blurb, it is very much an exploration of like motherhood, trauma, translation, literary analysis, archival research, and that part is very interesting. I think the blurb is very misleading, but the work itself is an interesting meditation. I'm just stuck on it right now because it is asking a lot of me and I think I need something like more fast-paced and fluffy. I'm hoping to finish this or DNF and unhaul it. I think I can finish this. I think this will be something that I really enjoy. The next book that I'm actively working on is The Sister Who Ate Her Brothers and Other Gruesome Tales by Jen Campbell, illustrated by Adam D'Souza. So this, I'm just 
picking through. They're different, like dark, creepy fairy tales. And uh, I'm just slowly working my way through them. Like, there's no reason to rush through creepy tales. I just pick one when I need like a break. My eyes need a break from the computer. They're short. The last book that I'm actively in the middle of is Carmilla by Joseph Sheridan Le Fanu. This is, of course, the classic sapphic vampire tale. I have a critical edition here which has, I believe, four essays at the back from various scholars reflecting on Carmilla and the various ways that it's still relevant in scholarship now and why it's even more relevant and, like, interesting to scholars right now. Um, <coughs> Rude. No, thank you. Our neighbors are allowed to load their truck. No, thank you. Anyways, this is the last patron book club book of the year. I know I will be reading this and discussing this in December, so I'm actually really enjoying this. Like, I find sometimes classics, like, the language sort of bogs you down and, like, there's, like, historical references that you're looking for, and I find I'm, I'm actively sitting with a classic. I'm often actively sitting, like, at a computer googling things for context, um, whereas this, I find, is pretty easy to read. It's also in public domain, so if you are looking for a copy, uh, Gutenberg has digital copies of it as well, and I think it will just be a fun, sort of dark and creepy read as the days get darker, the nights get longer. I also have five books here that I want to put on this end of year TBR. Four of them are things that I've bought recently, one of them is not. The one that is not a recent buy is The Light Fantastic by Terry Pratchett, so I recently read The We Free Men for the Patron Book Club book for October. I really enjoyed it. It really makes me want to explore this world more. So I have The Light Fantastic. I feel like I'm gonna start here. I did sample a chapter of this in my Five Star Predictions video. I am hoping that I do enjoy this just based on how much I enjoyed The Wee Free Men and The Color of Magic back in the day when I read it, so. Here is a small, probably funny, based on Terry Pratchett's writing in general. I'm hoping quick read. I'm hoping an easy win, considering that in November I read one book so far. I'm filming this on the 19th? 20th. I'm filming this on the 20th of November, and I've read one book. So I'm hoping to give myself an easy win for either the last bit of November or December. The last four books I have here are new buys. I have set a goal for myself to try and read all of the new buys that came in this year, and while I don't think that's happening, just based on how I've been feeling in October and November. I do think these four are doable. So the first is Under the Whispering Door by T.J. Klune. This is the author of The House on the Cerulean Sea, which I enjoyed. Um, I know that also came under some criticism, which is actually why I borrowed that book from the library, and I don't know, I've talked about that before. I don't see without knowing that he was like, oh, I based this off residential schools. Um, I don't see it and I was looking for it. Like, it's a stretch. It's a huge stretch. Because I enjoyed the writing, I enjoyed the characters, it had something like, it felt nostalgic. Something about it felt nostalgic and I really enjoyed it. I am giving him a second chance. Not that I need to give him a second chance. I enjoyed the first book. When a reaper comes to collect Wallace from his own funeral, Wallace begins to suspect he might be dead. I like dead things. I like death. I like explorations of death. The next book I have here is a surprising shonker of a book, and that is Hunting by Stars by Sherry Demoline. So Sherry Demoline wrote the itty-bitty YA indigenous dystopian now novel The Marrow Thieves, which is set in a near future where indigenous folks are being harvested for their bone marrow so white people can dream. That is about a group of indigenous folks who are moving their way north away from the cities to try and find an indigenous, like an all-indigenous community to take shelter in and, and protect themselves. And when I saw that this was a Marrow Thieves novel, like a, an adjacent novel in this world, I was expecting something uh, quite small, like its friend. Um, this is the problem with not working in a bookstore and not seeing the books as they come in off the line, off the skids. Um, I ordered this to my house 
I haven't been in a bookstore basically. I, I haven't been in a bookstore since I left Indigo. That's a mind-blowing thought. So yeah, I was surprised by the size, but Marrow Thieves was very easy to read. It was an engrossing, like, fast-paced tale, and I'm hoping that that stays true for uh, Hunting by Stars. I also really enjoy Sherry Demoline's writing in general. I've read her other book, Empire of Wild, which is adult fiction, and that I found a fast-paced read as well. So all signs point to this being an engrossing read, an easy win, and that's what I'm trying to set myself up for is easy wins to make myself feel good because I've been feeling very much like a failure for not meeting the arbitrary goals that I set for myself. <laughs> Right? You know when that happens and like other people would definitely give you grace for it but you can't give yourself grace for it because you're your own worst critic. I feel like we're all like this unless you're some sort of like psychopath or narcissist or actually doing really well with your mental health. Being kind to yourself is hard. The next book I have here, I wish I could convey how much this weighs. I don't know what they printed this on, Bible paper, but like <laughs> this is a petite book for the weight. Like, this is a, this is a hefty book. So I really, really enjoy Octavia Butler's writing for how much and how influential she is. Her body of works isn't big enough. Like, her brilliance, her pushing the boundaries in the speculative fiction space. I recently read Kindred, loved it, and it inspired me to pick up more of her work. So this contains the complete series of Dawn, Adulthood Rights, and Imago. It is Lilith Brood. It's a profoundly evocative, sensual, and disturbing epic of human transformation. I'm hoping to at least read one. I don't know that I will read all three, like I don't know that I'll read this cover to cover, but I definitely want to read one. And I think that is a very achievable win. I'm gonna call back to my 21 books to read in 2021 list that I have been about 50% successful with. And I'm gonna actually pick a book off that list that now seems seasonally appropriate, will allow me to mark a series as complete, and is a book that I first encountered at Christmas while at Indigo we were shifting to overnights, um, Christmas overnights, that was a miserable fucking Christmas. They kept moving me back and forth between early mornings and overnights, and I was absolutely trashed, so sick by the time Christmas actually came around. But I can remember getting up at like three in the afternoon after these overnights and reading the first two books in this series by Catherine Arden. And I actually reread them earlier this year. I borrowed them on audio and listened to them in preparation for this book. So the knowledge is in my noggin. It is time. These are the books that I would like to attempt to read, attempt to finish in the last chunk of the year. Basically December, because we're November 20th. We've got one week left of November and then December is upon us. Let me know your thoughts on these books in the comments down below. Have you read any of them? Have you set yourself any books that you would like to read before the year is over? Is there still like an anticipated read that's coming out for you before the year is over? Wish me luck. I wish you all luck as well with your reading. Thank you to my patrons who make videos like this possible. Links to the Patreon page are in the description box down below as usual. I hope you are all doing well, that you are staying safe, and I will see you soon with another video. Bye!